welcome to Unapologetic Geek Out or the UGO Podcast. I am Nick, your host, the Merc with the mic, and my fellow unapologist through my left. Travis. Oh my goodness, Travis. It is our Anime Central episode, Ace in 2018. Mm. My goodness. Uh, we are back from our, our trip down to Chicago. It was a great time. Uh, we have a bunch of interviews and cool stuff to get to. Uh, including uh, a press sessions. We were there as press for the first time ever, which was, was really fancy. cool. Um, we have some audio from people like Jerry Jewell and Kyle Haber and uh, Mika, I can't pronounce his last name, Skol- Sol- Skol- yeah, damn it. <laughs> anyway, it was a great time. Uh, and yeah, we have some great content to get to there in the show. Um, before we got that, we have the announcements I just want to get through. Uh, one, uh, hey guys, if you enjoy the show and, uh, if you are a new listener and listen to the convention episode, we, we met you at the convention or just, uh, someone who just happened by and is like, what, what's this thing? As you do. Uh, as you do. Uh, we could use your help here at the podcast. If you like us, maybe you can go and review us on that, them, their iTunes, subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, or review us and rate us wherever you are listening to us on the podcast. It helps us out with visibility, and it doesn't cost you a damn thing. Uh, except for pride and dignity. Except for pride. And, well, you know, you get pride and dignity when you rate people on 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 uh, iTunes. That's that's uh, an Apple uh, uh, incentive. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, they well, you, you're help supporting artists and independents and and organizers. You, that's all the pride in that. Uh, you have to sacrifice time, which is the only thing that seems to be kind of a, a you know, a commodity. I'm a sor- a sorely, I uh, have it in short supply. Mm. Um, but anyway, I do <laughs> want to also encourage you to check out our Facebook page. Maybe give us a like, like us on Facebook at the UGO Podcast fa- Facebook page. And follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at UGO Podcast. We have a bunch of pictures from the convention that you can go and check out some lovely cosplays and some great stuff over there. Uh, if you would like to support us in a monetary way, you can do so at our Patreon page at the UGO Podcast Patreon page. And uh, yeah, it's a real fun time over there. We have extra content for subscribers of anything up above a dollar. That's right, just a dollar. And you can get access to our extra shows like Movie Pass or Fail or uh, the UGO Commentaries for you know our netflix movies that we watch or just some other random stuff like an episode of inhumans or whatever Hmm. that we force ourselves to watch Mm -hmm. it's a it's a fun time uh and if you don't like it you can just even you know throw on a a limiter on your on your patreon subscription or thing like i oh maybe i'll pay for a dollar i don't want to pay much more than this much a month you can totally just put a limit on that and uh that you Patreon will make it impossible for you to pay over a certain price. It, the, the power is truly yours in that arena. Uh, with that out of the way, let's just get to the How We Doin' segment. And the How We Doin' segment will be very much a- ASIN-related. How was our ASIN experience, Travis? It was fun. It was very fun. It's always a hectic crowd there. Uh, I mean, I think that we have to go as press every year now. It is the only acceptable thing. Because, I mean, it was pretty fun. Because we got to skip like that whole line, even though we got there uh, a, like, a day late. I'm also a little worried how easy that was, because all we said was, we're press, and they just walked, they just turned aside. I'm like, oh, you didn't, there's not, okay, we're just kind of feels right. like we could have done that from the beginning. Yeah. Like it was, there was not a lot of coaxing that needed to, that needed to happen. I mean, I guess you still needed a badge after that, and like it would have been pretty obvious if you were waiting around in the regular line to get your badge. But mm-hmm. still, um, yeah, very cool. We weren't the only press there, although the press sessions were not as full as one might think. Yeah, no. When you were talking about how we were going to like a press junket, I was expecting like a very traditional junket, mm-hmm. and then that was not really what we got went into. Which was cool for us because we got to be, uh, you know... Basically, we got to run them because most other people didn't want to ask questions. What? That was a weird fucking... Fi- like, was that weird to you at yeah, all? Yeah, like, I just kept looking... Every time we asked a question, I'd look around and be like, no, no, okay, I guess I'll ask one. Then you'd ask one, then I'd ask one. We just kept I mean, going. Even with, like, with Kyle Bear, who had a couple more people than normal, but even then it was only, like, maybe seven, eight people yeah. in there. And it was like... Well, like, so at least one or two question. of them was their attendance, usually. 
And uh, the only reason I stopped asking questions is because I'm like, well, I want to give anyone who uh, has the chance, the you know, the chance to ask a question if they want it. I because I know this is not our podcast, and I don't want to just get into a conversation with this person. Um, yeah, except for the person below us who asked the most questions was like the moderator. Yeah, for the, the fucking like, he was he was the guy who was watching the door basically. He was one of the the staff that was asking a bunch of other. Yeah, questions. he asked a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, that was great. Uh, I feel like that's, uh, hopefully that's more of a standard at other, uh, conventions we go to because I that mean, was, because that was pretty one cool. of the larger ones. Well, so. it beats me having to hunt down and just trying to beg for interviews from some of the guests after I corner them somewhere in, yes. an, in an alley. So, because they have enough of that when they, uh, you know, when they, when they have to, you know, interact with anyone that's walking around down the hallway anyway. Mm-hmm. So I always do feel like I'm imposing uh, that anyway. So so having this whole setup of like this is where we come to have anyone who wants to do interviews or questions or like that and, and set that up. This is where you do it. Uh, I like that. So very cool. Uh, other than other than that, I mean, we got to you know you'll you hear some of that audio later. We have it cut down. Um, well, we have I probably have just my, our questions cut into there. No, there's many other ones anyway. <laughs> well, not the, well. I mean, for some of them, oh, we're not, oh, we're in a whole lot of other ones. But also, um, due to you know press rules and stuff, I can't I can't just share with you the all of the audio. Hmm. Uh, I've got to show show you some of the highlights. So we will just show the, some of the times like some of the questions we we got to ask and stuff. <laughs> so basically, you're saying you cut out that one guy who got angry the fact that they didn't actually watch the anime they were in. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, did he didn't get that angry? Did no, he? but still, uh, uh, it feels like every every time Kyle Haber gets asked that question of like, well, you know, I, I I love Zoro in One Piece. He was one of my inspiration. Like, what do you what do you feel about like playing One Piece or do you watch One Piece? Like, for some reason they they all want him to watch One Piece, and it's like, guys, One Piece is like seven hundred. We, we did the we did the math. If you were to try and watch One Piece. Uh, all the way through in order to catch up you'd have to watch um for 12 days of in uninterrupted Straight. yeah of uninterrupted viewing that's how much 20 and that's no sleep uh no eating or anything that's on a loop it would take 24 days for a robot to, to do or 12 days for a robot to, to do it uh much less a human being so that i, I don't understand why they all they always think like yeah he doesn't watch one piece I don't think I don't think anyone who works on One Piece probably watches all of One Piece, uh, because it, just from the fact that it probably changes creators and voice directors and all that sort of stuff. Like after you're done with a show, do you go back and watch the rest of it? Uh, but uh, I mean, I probably will never jump on the One Piece train, probably because well, one it, from what some of the One Piece I did watch, I'm not a huge fan of it. I like One uh, Piece, t- and two, uh, it's just way too fucking long. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a commitment. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we also get to see uh, Brianna Palencia had a concert I got to check out, which was pretty cool. Um, where she was just uh, had her old u- ukulele, Steven Universe style. And was just singing some of her for her own songs and stuff. I'll try and cut some of those in here as some of the musical breaks, if I can. I recorded a little bit of the audio there. Uh, I actually ran into her husband because uh, I was sitting next to him. It turns out. Oh, really? In the con- yeah. Uh, I thought he was just a very enthusiastic fan, but she pointed <laughs> him out a couple times. And he is the most enthusiastic fan, he- I hope. And he was like, yeah, he was doing the whoops, like woo, yeah, go, and uh, which was cute. And then also, I'm like, oh, God, I'm next to the most uh, annoying fanboy in the world, <laughs> her husband. Uh, <clears throat> which is, you know, it's also cool. No, that's cool. good, though. Uh, and, yeah, so I got to see that. Uh, I didn't see a whole ton of panels. Uh, I did get to see the lip sync battle with uh, some of the, the guests in which they uh, had some of the voice actor guests do a lip sync, uh, lip sync kind of sort of stuff with... Uh, uh, some uh, some songs. I think a Kaha Bear did a cover with uh, a metal al- a metal co- cover of um, uh, Toto's Africa, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. I didn't get any video or audio from that because it turned out some of the people there uh, did not want video or audio taken from them, and some of them were okay with it. <laughs> and I was confu- I'm like 
Okay, now I'm confused as to who wants it to, who wants it or who doesn't. That might be. And to just... be honest, it's it was like, it's fun and everything, but ever like anyone who uh, anyone who is there was also catching audio uh, audio and video of it. So you can just you know I'm sure you can type it in and find it. Right. Um, <clears throat> which is weird because it's like that like when when we do the because we went to go see the Cards Against Humanity panel as well, mm-hmm. which was really fun and funny. And that one I do get of like. Okay, hey guys, be cool and don't like record any video or audio because uh, people could lose their jobs from uh, being recorded, from saying being recorded do, seeing those bad things. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, I get that, and I'm also very impressed that no one. It, it seems like we no one has, uh, ha, you know, taken uh, sneaky recordings before and and caused problems with that. At least they didn't post them. I mean, it, it, it. I mean, it sure seems like that because you know. Otherwise, I don't think Samurai Dan would be able to do it over no. and over again. It would happen like once, and they'd be like, "All right, that's it, no yeah, more." And, like, because that would be a thing that would. Uh, if it even happened to one person, they'd probably shut down the whole thing. Right, or at very least, the the guests would never show up again. So I find that very, sh- I find that very surprising and also cool. No, we only had one person take out their phone. It was someone who had came in later because they never actually repeated the rules until that happened. Yeah. Which then, yeah, that makes sense. Um. But yeah, if, but as far as some of the guests not wanting them to like not wanting to be recorded doing the lip sync thing, sl- singing a song, I don't quite get that. Like I don't understand. Like, well, then why even do it? Like I mean, yeah. don't get me don't get me wrong. It's like, uh, I, uh okay, I'm not comfortable with a, a bunch of like people singing me like seeing me sing a song. I'm like, okay, cool. But, but why, then why, why you do you it there? for in front of a bunch of in front of a bunch of people? Like it. It's weird, like, I mean, unless they were going to sing a real dirty song, yeah. but no one did. Like, in fact, a lot of people sung musical, like, stage show stuff, because a lot of them come from a stage background. Yeah. And so they probably are singing, or lip-syncing songs that they've already done, like, on stage. So I'm just, I was confused, like, I don't, I don't, I don't get that, but, like, whatever. I mean, I'm sure they have their reasons. Uh-huh. <laughs> And uh, yeah, some of the other like uh, the voice actors from Annie from Attack on Titan, they had a bunch of the Sailor Moon cast there. Uh, it was uh, you know it was a good time. Uh, I think wow, well, I think Vicky Onyano might have been there as well too, but he wasn't part of like a lot of the guest hmm. stuff. I think he just came in for I think we missed probably missed him for a lot of his stuff on Friday. Yeah, because uh, we did only go for Saturday and like that was about it. We did like stay the whole three days, which was uh, which was funny because I like I would if I'd have known I would have gotten the uh, all the audio and stuff I needed the one day and maybe I would have only had the hotel room for the one. Yeah, but uh, well, it'd be really cool to actually go to more of that on the Friday anyway next mm-hmm. time, if Cause, possible. Because I did like it was uh, a th- guy had a previous thing uh, that I had to do on Friday, which is why we had such a late start. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also the fact that we had to drive through Milwaukee, and Milwaukee sucks. Well, and then like for once we got done with press sessions, I'm like, well, I have an hour of a, hour and a half of audio content that I have to sparse through and take out anyway. Yeah. So I have almost a whole episode's worth of recording to sparse through. So I was almost like, okay, well, I'll go get a couple more interviews and some backup stuff, take some pictures, and uh, call it a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> we, uh, your your sister joined us as our photographer. Yes. So thank you, Shannon, for taking uh, pictures with us. That was, it was awesome. actually her first convention too. Yeah, that was interesting to see. Like the Aston's a, a big one for yeah. someone's first first time at a convention. Probably not the best choice as a first time, but she seemed to have fun. Well, I mean, Daishokan was uh, was my first one, and that one's pretty big too. Mm-hmm. Uh no, you I thought you went to Katsunakon first. Oh, yeah, you're right. My first time was Daishokan. You went to Kitsitikon for- before, though. Yeah, I forgot uh, about Kitsitikon. Um, yeah, uh, so th- that was pretty cool. Yeah, we, we basically went to... We spent, like, the whole entire day just walking around taking pictures. And I'm pretty sure between me and my sister taking them and then you taking them on your own, I'm guessing we never hit the same one twice. I mean, yeah, there was... Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I think we even hit the same cosplay twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also tried making sure, like, I'm taking a picture of that one because I know what that is, and Nick probably won't or won't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna have to remind me again of like who the which ones which of which oh, are you the critical send role, me the pictures cri- and critical I'll... role people are. Um, or you I just... can I, I think I know which ones are the critical role cosplay, so I'll just look it up. Um, I say you just send me the pictures the, too, and I can just post them. The uh, <laughs> the uh, one of the weird things that was. 
uh, noticing too is just that uh, I had this weird moment uh, out in the floor uh, looking at some of the cosplays because I don't know if you if you get this like sometimes either or whatnot, but there's like sometimes where I don't notice how hot a character is until someone actually cosplays them in real life. Like like I normally like don't do that like um but i saw this one person in a widowmaker cosplay okay and like for all the characters in overwatch they're so over stylized i don't really consider them like people yeah like it's so uh you know they're cartoon characters mm. so i don't like equate well, even that their with... personas are essentially cartoon characters yeah, yeah so i'm like i don't equate that with sexy um, but then I saw this, uh, cosplayer in, in a Widowmaker that was just phenomenal. Like it was fantastic. She had, uh, the head case that was actually, they had all lit up mm. It actually came down over her head. Okay. Um, it was like fantastic. So but you're saying it was something, it was something other than just someone in a bodysuit. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, the, the bodysuit aspect of it was actually not just a, like some people have like the painted on bodysuit. Mm. Hers was like this, um, what do you call it? Like the black widow type, like, uh, it looked like not unlike that like like skin like second skin type uh uh almost like leather armor sort of thing but okay. it was all skin tight and like came up all along and like uh her entire body and then the, of course there's that you know widowmaker has that a giant v mm. uh v-neck thing going right down uh, like the whole middle of her torso and i did like this double take of like holy shit um, and I was just, it was just, it struck me of like, I'd never really noticed, I just never noticed like, oh shit, yeah, Widowmaker, Widowmaker is designed as like this sexy French woman. I mean. And like, and I just, I guess it never really clicked in my mind and it just took someone, uh, seeing it, someone in real life doing it, I was like, oh shit, yeah. The purple skin probably doesn't help. Yeah, I, I guess like I was considered her like, why does she have purple skin? Is she like an alien? No, I she's no not idea. an alien. No. She's like, maybe she's like an experiment? Man, I guess I never really... There's a lot of stuff in Overwatch I just never questioned before. It's because Overwatch doesn't actually explain jack shit. Like, yeah, so I guess there's just some stuff that I just never really think about. I mean, you probably see a person's costume, like, wow, that's hot. You probably look in the cartoon and go, like, that's a skinny Barney. Why am I looking at a skinny Barney? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I had my my gross, you know, testosterone male moment of just, like, my eyes popping in the mouth. I was like, whoa! Congratulations. Uh, and then I went back into like, oh, got to uh, respect the female form. That was, that was, you have a lovely cosplay. It was, it was fan, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, but yeah, a lot of other great cosplayers that like in, you know, even the Widowmaker, like the amount of work that she put in with just the, the head, uh, the, like the headgear thing was mm. like impressive. Like it lit up with the red lights and everything, which was super cool. Uh, saw like a Bioshock big daddy running around. Yes. That one was uh, cool. I think we got pictures of that one. Mm hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was super cool. I, I, I mean, I wish some of the panels had been, I don't know, let's be blunt. Like, I wish they'd have been a little more interesting. Uh, you're just jealous that you didn't get to do one. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, normally I'm not because, uh, we got to do one last year and last year there was a bunch of other panels that were like, okay, there's like a bunch of stuff here. Like, uh, like there was that fan thing. Like, mm. like there was the, you know, the combat fan stuff. Like, okay, that's a cool panel. Yeah. That's an interesting thing. It's uh, Japanese related. I get it. Uh, it's like, uh, and then, uh, you know, I forgot some of the other panels from the previous year, but like, you know, there was the improv panel with uh, Kramia Lee was, was last year. And like, there was a bunch of those type panels that some of the guests ran mm -hmm. like themselves that were interactive that were really cool. Uh, and... Yeah, so like there was, some, you know, of course the panels with all the guests this year were pretty neat, and we didn't. To be fair, I didn't get to see anything on Friday, but really scrolling through Saturday's list of stuff to do, I was kind of like, I was just like scrolling, 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 like, okay, uh, well maybe this thing, and then after you hit like eight o'clock, it just becomes hentai. <laughs> all the like, did you notice that on yeah, the block? I pretty much stopped looking after that. I was Look, like, oh, it was good. it was like so much hentai. Um, like, you know, hentai watches logs, there was hentai discussion panels, and don't get me wrong, like, if hentai is your thing, cool, good on ya. Um, it's not mine, uh, and... Well, that's the problem, is that Ace is such a large convention that you need just, you just need more rooms for hentai, Nick. Uh, yeah, and it's just weird, like, and of course they had multiple hentai viewing panels of, like, some of them, like, and I think, you know, some of them were marked as, you know, come make fun of bad hentai. Mm. And then some of them were just hentai viewing. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
Like, is that mean? Like, I, I mean, I sort of get going to laugh at it because I we did go that one time me and Kyle did last year, mm. and even then I was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> like, uh, because you know. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, I'm not snooty. I do look at porn. I mean, it's it's that's it's not that. It's just the fact that hentai, and it's like it's not the fact that it's, it's cartoon even. It's just the fact that hentai tends to get... Look, if there's a couple things that I'm not into when I'm watching porn, the list goes, and let's see if you can find any correlation to hentai. Mm. Incest, uh-huh. monster fucking, uh-huh. and or bestiality of any type. Not my thing. Uh, oh, also non non con or rape. Uh, well, Nick, I, why? What? What do you even do? I what know, the fuck? I know. I've, and I've taken a, a lot of things off the board on the hentai thing. I'm like, yeah, if uh, I'll, you know what, I'll watch a hentai, but I can't have any of those things. Thi- those three things in it. Good luck, Nick. Go and don't go want. And, if you can't accept con- non consensual and incest, what are you even watching? Come it's, on. <laughs> God, it, and it always comes back to incest. It's always that, no matter what I like, and even in, like even in non hentai stuff, like there's always this weird thing. Well, you have to remember, twincest is a is a term that sure. exists. Yeah, get that's it. A, that's a thing. Okay, um, and I look. I, ah, this is <laughs> we're being really stuck on this, aren't we? Uh, it, it it was just weird to me that so it it like took over late night Saturday, mm. like that, all that hentai stuff. And like, uh, if you weren't going to the cards against humanity, uh, re- read or like the rave or something, that was basically what you were doing. And it's just, I don't, I don't get it. Um, which is weird. Cause you could come to cards against humanity, basically get the same amount of dirtiness. Yeah. I, I mean, I also don't get what, like, <laughs> uh, like if you are watching like the the whole thing to make fun of it, there's also always like a bunch of people in a room make fun of it. It's just the loudest asshole uh, that you hope is the funniest. Um, and yeah, so I, I I guess I was like I'm like well we had like the Pokemon script read that I I'm like I feel like that's a really cool um, panel that uh, is you know anime related mm. and uh, and you know there's like we haven't run it on other, at, at conventions before so like uh or at the time that i submitted the panel for it mm. like we didn't have any like video proof of like we can run the panel so like it's there's that but i don't know i was just like i was just unimpressed by the panel lineup um but yeah uh, any other things we want to mention for uh no i like i said i had mostly fun just walking around cuz that place is so huge mm-hmm. that we just basically walked up and down it constantly. We're like, oh, look, there's new people here this time because it's been five minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I love that this place is like one of the only conventions that I go to that I know, yeah, I'm going to pay a lot of money for food, but at least I'm going to get something tasty. Because yeah. they do actually have like the food trucks there. It's like, yeah. yeah, they're more expensive than you normally pay for, but I don't fucking care because it's actually like, I love the taco food truck. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I should suppose we should mention... Uh, couple news things i wanted to get to um i <laughs> i did want to mention that apparently uh uh like like green like uh, the makers of green lantern warner brothers uh they were <laughs> apparently they want uh, ryan reynolds green lantern ring back that they gave him for the when he did the green lantern movie because ah, of ah, the whole ah, deadpool ah, thing ah, like, ah. i think it, i'm pretty <laughs> sure this is just kind of like a whole like them kind of trying to get it on the joke tooth sort of thing All right I mean, so they're not the complete butt of the joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, at least that's what I would hope it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they released a tweet or whatever, which was like, "Sorry, uh, Ryan Reynolds, we're going to need the ring back." <laughs> and they have Tomar Ray with his hand out, and I was like, "Okay, that's that's pretty funny." Um, and uh, it's. It was reminding me of like you know there are some really good you know jokes in Deadpool too. I know we were a little bit colder on it, but uh, yeah, it's a, it, I, I find that really funny. Also, uh, in other comic book related news, uh, Infinity War looks like it's on track to be one of the most successful movies of all time. Uh, it's there's questioning now of whether or not it will make the top grossing film mm. ever. <clears throat> um, uh, did you see too the fact that there were some people were talking about that? The Deadpool ending stinger might be canon. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, it's stated that it's like, well, it doesn't. 
I think the director's re- director said like it was like well it, it's canon in, in my logic and and I mean for a, a movie like Deadpool when it's it's so in its own universe and I don't know how much it has to do with any of the other canon stuff anyway mm. so I'm like well it could be canon so <clears throat> if so uh, maybe it is the only that's the only thing that saves the whole. Um, uh, I know I don't want to spoil, but like the right. whole arc uh, that we weren't uh, a huge big fan of, like the whole, um, <laughs> the whole twist near the very beginning. I mean, honestly, I just care about Peter. Uh, also, yeah, Peter, like uh, we we like him. Like that would make it an actual subversion of that trope, maybe. Um, I still wouldn't be that big of a fan of it, even if it still was that that was their out. Mm-hmm. Also, apparently. There was a deleted scene out of the credits. They had one that uh, they played for test audiences, and test audiences didn't dig it. It was too dark, right? Because it was too dark. Apparently, they had Deadpool go back in time and kill baby Hitler. And uh, he could, he like, I think the context of the scene is that he can't quite do it at first because it's just a baby. Uh, and then he draws the mustache on the baby mm. and then uh, shoots it. And for me, I'm kind of like, man... That would be really funny. <laughs> like it's, it, I know, and it is dark, but I think that that's real fun. I mean, we're just now getting to the point where we're like, yeah, child murder on TV is okay. <laughs> mm, uh, I mean, it worked for it. And yeah, everyone, right. And everyone loves that fucking movie. So I guess you just have to wait a little bit longer for baby murder to be considered kosher. Mm. Oh, also, I uh, I watched a little bit more of a of a Justice League, uh, the the movie. Uh, cause I was curious, like, cause when we watched it, we were like, you know, this, it's not too bad considering it's, uh, it's Rocky beginnings mm-hmm. and the, how they're trying to rush this sort of certain, certain stuff. I wanted to know how it plays after seeing Infinity War. Yeah, if it held up. Like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, still, I still don't think it's like a horrible movie. Like there's still like, there's still some stuff like in there that is like, well, I mean, you are correcting some stuff in here that we didn't like from, you know, Batman versus Superman or mm-hmm. Man of Steel. But on a comparison level, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's night and day. It's like, you can really get the sense of like, man, you guys don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Well, again, like Infinity War made more money, like, but it's opening day than Justice League did, like its whole run. I also now going back and wa- watching them, I'm pretty sure, I'm like, I'm going to say something. You, you tell me if you agree or not. Okay. If you're going to go along with it. All right. I think Captain America is now officially cooler than Batman. I mean, like I, I feel like he is like, and I don't mean like in the movies, but I feel like in general, in pop culture, uh, in, in all encompassing as a whole, Captain America is now cooler than Batman. I think that really helps by the fact that Chris Evans really plays that part well. Like even outside of the movies, he just kind of plays that part. I think, uh, yeah, I think that helps it along. And we I don't think... really have a Batman. Everyone has a Batman. But, like, collectively, we don't have a Batman. Yeah, and it's... It, it, I, I mean, I, that's the sort of thing that I that I think about now. I think of just moments in, like... Because you think about Infinity War, where they... We see that, like, that moment where Cap first shows up. And we've seen that moment in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It's not like anyone is surprised that he's in the fucking movie. Right. But yet, when the whole audience we saw him with, when he, when he shows up, when they show him in silhouette... And everyone is slow. It's the tension slowly builds, and then when he comes out of the the light, the, comes out of the light. Everyone fucking goes nuts and applauds, <laughs> and just goes fuck yeah, like it's Cap, and like, and I'm, and we're all screaming for a thing we knew was gonna happen, yeah. but it's so exciting when it happens because the Russo brothers know how to make a moment out of fucking anything. True. Uh, Although this would be another one of those times where I love a time travel device just to go back ten years and be like Nick. Nick, Mm -hmm. you're going to say Captain America's cooler than Batman someday. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, think about it. When have you when have you heard an audience or seen anything where you were like everyone was openly clapping for a character just appearing on screen Mm -hmm. in the DC universe? Like I have usually clap when they leave. I can be I could the only thing I can think of is when maybe when Superman shows up by Justice League where yeah. he showed up that first time. That's actually like, hey, a pretty cool moment. Hey, is this guy bothering you? And then people were kind of like, oh, holy yeah, shit. This is Superman. There we go, and, and that was that was pretty close. But it's but like, the thing is that that scene isn't necessarily earned because that should have been what that character was like the whole time, rather mm-hmm. than be like, "Look, we've course corrected. Now it's what you want to see." Yeah. Whereas I, this is like, nope. This is Captain America after his what sixth, seventh movie. Also, if you watch Winter Soldier again, I still think that 
the Captain America has still the mo- the coolest moment in any of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Still, in all the movies, the, the coolest moment is that home uh, is the point that happens right after the speech where uh, what's his name Frank Grillo has that guy by gunpoint is like you better launch the you better launch those fucking helicarriers right now and he's like cancer captain's orders mm-hmm. and that is that i swear you i i dare you to go back and watch that moment and not at least whisper to yourself fuck yeah <laughs> like it just it that moment is fucking amazing it's just just great uh but yeah that's uh well basically i was doing this week rather than editing and stuff we're watching winter soldier mm. and uh keep an eye out of the the box office for deadpool and uh seeing how it plays out mm-hmm uh, yeah, I still watch. I still have only seen Infinity War once, and I kind of want to go back and watch it again. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, it's going to be in theaters for a long fucking yeah. while. I mean, at this point, I would only want to go back if I was going to go see it with a full theater because I want to go see it with a full theater experience. Mm-hmm. So maybe I go on a Saturday night or something. Because uh, that theater experience is just like one of a kind amazing, too. Uh, uh, also, I guess I want to mention uh, Westworld came back. Um, I know we were talking about how Westworld, like, I was a little bit down it's on it. It's a slow like, start. It's just, it's a really slow start. I just had to readjust, and then, uh, we get, uh, this week's episode, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah! Uh, fucking samurai! Yeah. Ninjas versus cowboys, let's do this shit! Uh, so, yeah, what, I, I, I really like, like this last episode of Westworld, guys, if you are, uh, not up on Westworld. I, I won't. I mean, I won't spoil it or anything. But there's a great <laughs> moment where they, uh, they, uh, they, they play another cover of the Painted Black song. Yes, oh my god, that was and we great. and we get a we get a whole like there's this whole like uh, reflexive mirror thing sort of going on with the samurai world that's like way cooler than I even thought. Of. Like it's ju- you know, the just being samurai world. Um, it gives the it gives the show a whole open kind of feeling too of just like oh yeah, there's a bunch of like segments of like this park. Or whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, Samurai World is for the the non pussies or something yeah. like it's <laughs> for the for those who think Westworld is too much of a baby game for them. <laughs> they go to Samurai World I'm like you fucking white people. Ah, uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I had uh, had for today. Uh, other than Brooklyn Nine Nine having its uh, season finale, I guess. Yes, that was adorable. Uh, Jake and Amy's wedding, great, fantastic. Uh, can't wait for it to come back uh, next season on NBC. It was the bomb. It, it was. It was really good. <laughs> it was the bomb. There were no survivors. <laughs> uh, inside joke. You guys have seen the episode, but yeah, also a great moment. Um, so yeah, uh, other than that, I think we can get right into our interviews uh, for for this episode. Uh, we won't have any trailer talk for today. Uh, we'll just keep it right to the straight interviews and stuff uh, and get through this uh, in a relatively quick manner. Uh, with that, I think we'll just take a small music break and come back uh, with our ASIN content. Uh, we'll see you guys in a bit. Uh, and give a short little introduction to start things off. We'll open up the questions. Okie doke. Uh, my name is Kyle Abear. Last name is spelled H E B E R T. Um, and the reason I do the pronunciation and the spelling is because I get a lot of misspellings and mispronunciations. <laughs> I'm from Louisiana. That's a Louisiana Cajun French name, Abear. So the H is silent, E's like an A. Uh, but I grew up in Dallas and uh, I first got a uh, Bachelor of Arts degree in radio, TV, film, with a focus on radio. I ended up working in the radio industry as a DJ for years for all sorts of formats. Um, my favorite, though, was between heavy metal and kids. I went from heavy metal introducing <laughs> Slayer and Metallica to Radio Disney. <laughs> but being at Radio Disney uh, is what afforded the opportunity to try out for Funimation in 2000 with uh, Dragon Ball Z. So uh, I've been a part of that dub since, well, God, 18 years ago. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. But yes, the career that's kind of started off with that trip, Dragon Ball Z, Blue Gender, Yu Yu Hakusho, Full Metal Alchemist, Classics. and uh, moved to LA and being friends with Steve Bloom, who kind of got <laughs> open doors with uh, his agent, who's now my agent, and getting onto Naruto, which led to getting onto Bleach, and Gurren Lagann, and Street Fighter, Fire Emblem. The gift that keeps on giving. Um, <laughs> it's the coolest job in the world. But, you know, like anything worth having, you have to fight for it. There's a lot of down, you know, blood, sweat, and tears behind achieving any sort of success or, you know, forward momentum in any career. And um, I, I was blessed with very supportive parents. You know, they didn't understand the self-employed ethic of, of wanting to do something where you do 98% auditions <laughs> and you don't get paid for auditions. Or, you know, you could say, you spend your time auditioning and then waiting mm -hmm. for the call. But, you know, you're used to getting told no. So either the auditions come in and you send them off. Nowadays, you record them from home and you email them in. And when you don't hear from them, you know that's a no. And <laughs> I don't hear from most people. It is a blessing to have the chance to read for projects. Uh, whether it's cartoons or anime or video games or commercials even, you know, yeah, commercials, they're not that, you know, fun, you know, because it's not character driven, but that helps pay the bills. <laughs> you know, you land the national ad campaign that runs on a major network and you get a piece of the pie. That's like getting free money every few months. It's like, hey, it ran this much and you get this much. I'm very, very grateful for the fans, obviously, and the convention circuit for uh, supporting the industry that I'm very, very proud to be a part of. I started as a fan, and uh, now that I get to be, to be a part of it is an indescribable, uh, indescribable uh, sort of thing. It's just hard to put into words how cool it is to be in pop culture, not just a fan of pop culture. So, yeah. That's that's the little blurb about me, I guess, that went on for five minutes. <laughs> uh, speaking of, you were speaking of passion before, I'd like to keep that ball rolling. Uh, yeah. You've been recently taken off the market, I hear. Uh, <laughs> married, yes. <laughs> how, is, happily. how is married life treating you? It's going great. You know, um, I used to be really cynical about relationships, that, that jaded single, like, I'm never going to find love, and it's just all about you people using each other and manipulating and hurting. It's a it's horrible, horrible outlook. <laughs> um, but with my wife, Christina, uh, she has helped literally turn my life around. Uh, she has enlightened me to you know, having an open mind about things like, you know, therapy, you know, counseling, uh, uh, dealing with mental illness, dealing with um, dealing with your past, dealing with who you are and what made you and what you can do in a constructive way. Because, you know, until you're 18, yeah, you can sit there and blame, my parents did this, that, that. but once you're 18, it's on you to take your horrible upbringing or your dysfunctional family, and now you can learn from that. And... You know, uh, I used to think, oh, I can't afford a therapist and all, I can't afford antidepressants and all that. And luckily, you know, I, I make enough that I qualify for insurance and then we're all forced to get insurance anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's another can of worms. But, um, but having now worked with several different counselors and seen different approaches and everything that, that's helped me learn that a good counselor just learns to ask the right questions and they listen to you and you're actually the one doing the healing. You're the one actually fixing yourself. Uh, so she opened my eyes up to that. Um, and she supports me, she, she goes to the cons with me. Um, I was gonna say, she's a creator as well, right? Yeah, self-published author. Um, she goes by the pen name, and I love this, Writer Wrong. Writer Wrong. You know, always tell her she has the best pen name I've ever heard. I'll let her know that, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... And we knew each other since high school. Oh. Been friends well, all along. Oh. We reunited on MySpace, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, and they're, you know... We reunited with high school fans, or friends, rather. And, uh, yeah, back in the fall of 2018 and went to visit my family in Dallas and she was in Dallas her whole life and we met, went out, it worked and 
here we are today. Uh, you said you did some commercial work before and it's not always that exciting, but I was wondering if there was an exception of a commercial that you did really like or uh, wasn't. I did. I did. We did. When iPhone first came to Verizon, uh, they reenacted uh, the Island of Misfit Toys from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you know, the claymation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they redid that, and they had to revoice. They had actors come in and revoice the characters, like the Choo Choo Train and the Lion, and and all of that. You know, it was a Charlie in the box. Yeah. <laughs> but they hired Billy West, you know, Futurama, <laughs> and one of my idols, and uh, Great Delisle. And you know, I'm in the room with these voice acting legends, and we're all having to sing this Christmas tune. That kind of reenacts the old thing. And I ended up getting cut from the commercial, unfortunately. Oh, oh no. <laughs> But being in the same room and recording with those people, this is why people who do cartoons do what they do and they'll do it till they die because mm. it's so much fun to be in the room with people and watch how they act and react to what you're doing. And, and yeah, you're going to do the lines as scripted, but you also have a chance to, to improvise and people play off each other. And you get to watch everyone screw up <laughs> and think, wow, okay, I thought it was just me. Okay. <laughs> Because we don't have to memorize dialogue, that's great. But, you know, as you're trying to find the perfect take, yeah, the clients are going to be like, too many cooks in the kitchen. You're going to get one guy saying, we like this a little faster, this is a little slower. And it's like, you're there for an hour. At least you're being paid for your time. But that was the most fun I had on a commercial, even though I didn't end up in the final product. Uh, so obviously, you've done a lot of different roles. Um, have you ever had where someone comes up like, oh my god, I want you to do with this line from my favorite thing, and just be like, I, I don't remember that at all. Absolutely. I'll have people <laughs> asking for an obscure character from a, a show that maybe just came and went. It was a blip on the radar. And it's like, I'm sorry, I don't remember a line that this character said. I don't even remember what they sound like. But thank God for YouTube. You know, fans will upload <laughs> clips of anything. So I've been able to... It's like, I wonder what sort of phrases I should kind of keep in my mental Rolodex. <laughs> keep on demand, like when people say, can you say your favorite uh, Ezreal line from League of Legends? And it's like, you belong in a museum. But I also like it more when the fans tell me specifically, say, you belong in a museum. <laughs> Will you narrate my life, Dragon Ball Z? Like, next time on Dragon Ball Z. Like, <laughs> See, people say, you know, what superpower do you want? Do you want to fly or teleport? It's like, no, I think it's pretty cool. I just speak and, and people squee. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. That, that, that's neat. They, they melt. They turn into little giggly little kids. It's like, that, I, that's, a, that's an unanticipated you know, perk to the job. <laughs> I go in and record, 10, 15, almost 20 years later, these kids grow up and it's like, you were my childhood. <laughs> I'd go home and I'd hear your voice start and end every episode. Or Gohan was a big inspiration. Or Kamina from Gurren Lagann was a big inspiration to me. And can you do this quote or do this pose or, you know, something like that. And then you see it bleed over in pop culture. I think I saw like a, a making of footage from Thor with Loki and Thor doing Ginyu Force poses, or I like to say say a man poses, but say a man basically rips off Ginyu Force. This is Nick with the UGO Podcast here at ASIN. Oh my God, and I have my first interview of the day, uh, and, it go, and it goes to the lovely Comfort and Adam. Would you like to say hi? Why, hello. Pleasure to be here. Hi, everybody. So with those illustrious voices, I have no idea which one of you is Comfort, because <laughs> both of those were... Both of those were like a warm blanket wrapped around my uh, earlobes. You guys have voices for radio, that is for sure. Uh, but you are here with your booth, Comfort and Adam. Is, I believe is the name of the booth as yes, well. That is uh, the name of the booth. That's the name of us. It's the name of our brand. It's a uh, the name label. Of our publishing company. Exactly that we yeah. publish under. So we are can, us, and that's keep it simple. Exactly. I like, <laughs> I like it. And uh, yeah, you have uh, a bunch of stuff here. I see a bunch of art prints, oh, yes. comics, uh, a bunch of really, really neat stuff. Uh, I love the art style here. Uh, so, are you both? You both create the artists. You both oh, artists. Yeah. yeah. So we both write, both draw, uh -huh. both color, both okay. letter. We're the two-headed hydra of comics. Yeah. I see. Okay. So that, does that mean in order to spawn, you'd have to cut one of you off? Yes. And then, yes. <laughs> and then more of yeah. you would grow. Yeah. This is why we don't have children because we just have interns and cats because we don't want to cut a part of ourselves off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> There's some sort of comfort in Adam and Eve joke in there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend time working it out. 
Uh, so, yeah, I see a, a bunch of stuff. Do you, do you have any things separated on the, well, uh, tables of the, which art style is yours, or is oh, it all no. mixed up? It's all it's mixed, all mixed up. up. In mixed. fact, we usually will work together on the same pieces. You oh, know, really? When we're doing our comics, we're writing together. We're drawing at the same time. Some oh. characters she's drawing, some characters I'm drawing. We color at the same time. That is uh, very interesting. things apart. Yeah, everything we do, we are doing together at the same time. I don't think I've ever quite heard of a process like that. I that's know. that's quite unique. I really like it. Probably explains why uh, in some of your picks, like I'm looking at the Disney villain one right now, Jafar makes me nice and heavy, like, oh, look at Jafar up to no good. And then Hades makes me want to shit my pants. <laughs> uh, Hades he, is really the magic on there. You gotta have the contrast. There's like, if there's one thing out of there, it's like, it, and it's weird because he's right next to the old woman who used to give me nightmares from from Snow White. <laughs> and I thought that was the scariest thing. But now Hades is like, it's it's actually like James Wood's spirits, spirit animal, I think. <laughs> yeah. And it's dark. It's horrifying, and I don't want to look at it anymore. Uh, but <laughs> if you guys would like to look at it, you should definitely check out some of their art prints in here because I see some great stuff. I see uh, anime. I see Full Metal Alchemist. There's the I, what I really was catching my eye before was this superhero bar thing, oh, yeah. in which oh, is yes. actually two prints you combine together. Yep. In which it creates the full bar, one half being DC, one half being Marvel. Yeah. Correct. That's yep. really cool. How did that concept come around? Well, we uh, we wanted to do something with the Justice League and the Avengers, but we wanted it to be see. Well, we recognize that within comic fandom, there are some fairly stark divisions between people. Some people are very, very sequestered onto their corner. I don't I know only what you're talking like about. I've only, only I've, like I've only run into the nicest people on the internet. Sure. Oh yes, yes. Nothing but sunshine and rainbows out there. Um, so we wanted to do something with the characters, but we decided that it would be best if we provided a split, so that if you just like one or the other, you can get that half of it. And it's all fine. And it's super, super fun. Something like with our work, what we try and do, whether it's our comics, whether it's the prints, you want to do something where it feels like them, like yeah, you're the hanging out with your friends. Right. There's a lot of looking hot shots that you'll see in this artist alley and all other artist alleys. But to have something that's special, that feels unique to those characters, that's what we're always trying to go for. I do like I do like the idea of She-Hulk and uh, uh, Black Canary playing uh, pool together. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Although I'm assuming that uh, She-Hulk could never break because that's unfair. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> She's got to do it gently. Yeah, which gets harder the more drinks she gets into her. Mm, it's mm -hmm. the end of that game is much more difficult than the beginning. Sure. Well. Uh, obviously, it's early day on Saturday, so you haven't had a chance to like see uh, too much. But is there anything really cool you've seen around the con so far, like special cosplays or anything like that? Uh, if only we really see whatever comes to our table, because we're working the whole time. Just the whole time. Oh, the yeah. whole time. Oh yeah. So we see what's in front of us, and whoever comes up to the table, and then we're working generally till two to five in the morning doing sketches for people. As a matter of fact, if you're at Anime Central this weekend, we did the badges, so you can always come and get them signed by us. What? That is crazy. This badge I'm wearing right now? Yes, that's done. Awesome. With the adorable pirate on it? That's, that's it, right. Yeah. That's great. You know what? I'm going to get this signed right after the interview. Darn right. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. So, uh, yeah, is there anything like a, a future piece that you uh, want to work on or oh, that you have boy. some sort of dream project? Well, right now we're pretty deep in the woods working on writing the second season of our Uniques comic. Uh, yeah, we which just is sort wrapped. of like Teen Titans if it was an HBO series. Right, wow. yeah. Okay. So we, we do think of it in terms of seasons like a show. Uh, and we just finished the first season, the third volume of the book, just like it's so hot off the presses we had to have a special shipment so that we could have some copies for this show. Um, but we're already working on writing the next one, and that's that's mostly where our heads are at right now. Man, that's that's fantastic. So what was it? It was Uniques again? The, the Uniques. uniques. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what's that, a, a brief description of what that one's about? Like you said, the HBO with Teen Titans. Yeah, it's Sure, like, well, we, mm -hmm. Comfort and I grew up with superheroes, you know. It's, it's what brought us into comics, like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't read Marvel and DC for too long before you start realizing that these characters are never going to change. These stories aren't right. really going to mean anything. Even it's all going to reset. Even in Infinity War, I guarantee you will It's all going to reset, stick. right? Exactly. So, we wanted to do a superhero story that was about growth and change. Uh, we start with these seven teenagers, and by the end of the series, they're going to be in their 50s. We're going to see the entire breadth of their careers, all the ways that they change the world and all the ways that the world changes them. As we that, end the world around them. That is an ambitious concept. I love it. 
Well, I we think are nothing if not ambitious well, and stupid. If, <laughs> if people would like to come see your ambition and or stupidity, whatever it is, <laughs> sure, sure. do you guys have a website, uh, social Absolutely. media pages and stuff you'd like to pimp out so mm -hmm. people can see this great stuff? Sure. In the interest of keeping it simple, it's comfortanatom.com. Which has a link page to all of our social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or what have you, we're everywhere you want to be. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. Thank you guys so much for do taking the Thank time to interview so with me. Much. It's an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Absolutely. Have a Thank great you. day and a great Michelle. rest of your con. Yeah, yeah. Damn right. This is Nick with the UGO Podcast here at ASIN 2018, and I am here at a great, awesome-looking booth with some great makeup. I'm here with... Amanda Baker. I'm the owner and creator of Surreal Makeup. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, I was supposed the Baker uh, moniker you went past your family ties. You were like, no, Dad, I won't be a part of a proud line of bakers. Makeup is for me. That is my destiny. I wish that was the case. I actually married into the Baker family. I'm actually oh, okay. a Marino. <laughs> I, I, I see. I, I, mis, I miscorrected that. I, I, it was more romantic in my mind. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have uh, built it up like that. Uh, surprisingly enough, I've been to a lot of these conventions. This is the first time I've seen a makeup booth, believe it or not. And I guess I'd never really thought about it, but for a, a cosplay-heavy uh, place, that's actually very surprising to me. Uh, so how did you get into doing uh, convention work with this uh, makeup? Well, I'm actually from Clearwater, Florida, and out there there's a little pier called Sunset at Pier 60. It's like a daily festival, a craft festival. A lot of my repeat customers out there were getting makeup for different cosplays that they were working on for the conventions around Florida. They are the ones who actually pushed me into doing conventions because they were like, oh, nobody has anything what you have. You've got to do shows. You've got to do shows. We need your stuff. I started doing uh, little tiny shows in Florida about 2013 or 14. From there, it's just progressed. Every single year, we keep adding more shows. I went from being just in Florida to traveling the country doing 28 shows a year. And all of this is completely mineral. So a lot of my cosplay customers have sensitive skin. They can wear this all day without having to reapply it or having an allergic reaction to it. The Sun and anime fans are not friends. We are mortal enemies. So that's that's good that you took that into consideration. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of different options here. You got just a, a bevy of different stuff, different colors and glitters and whatnot. It's just beautiful looking. Uh, what would you suggest for someone like me? Like a baseline, I need something to bring out the soullessness in my eyes. Um, if you wanted to bring out the soullessness, I would do Raven, which is a matte black loaded with different multi-chromatic sparkles. But let's say you wanted to cosplay some of the vampires from Twilight. I have something called Shooting Star, which looks like crushed diamonds. Dust that over, you're going to be sparkling like a vampire. Uh, you know my secret weakness. I've always wanted to look like Edward. I know I look like Draco Malfoy, but I just wanted to be a vampire my whole life. So that's that's really great. Uh, I know I was looking flipping through your book, and uh, I see some uh, you know some famous, some more famous people on there, some cosplayers and stuff like that. Are they wearing your actual uh, material? They absolutely are. Um, that one lady right there, that's Jennifer Lynn Warren from American Horror Story. I met her at Spooky Empire, which is a horror convention. She bought a whole bunch of my makeup um, to use for her belly dance convention uh, shows that she does. So that other picture of her is actually her in LA wearing my makeup for her belly dance. But I also have uh, Allison Tabitha, Yaya Han, both of those ladies wear my makeup as well. Very cool. Did I see someone that looks suspiciously like Laura Bailey on there? Um, I have. I don't know if it's Laura Bailey. I know I do have the lead singer from Here Kitty Kitty in there. Okay. Uh, so that's that's really cool. Probably helps the business out and everything like that. Uh, so uh, what was the name again? It's uh, Surreal Makeup. That's correct. How'd it's you come up with that name? Well, because all of these different colors that you see here, I know your listeners can't see it, but if they go to our website, all of these colors are exist in minerals anyways. But when you go to places like Bare Minerals or some of the other companies, they only have the muted tones, the mustard tones. I wanted people to see that you can have these gorgeous bright colors with no chemicals. There's no dye. There's no lakes. They're not going to stain your skin for five years afterwards. And that's what makes it surreal. You have this amazing color without all of the chemicals. That does sound amazing, and I and I want the listeners to be able to see it. So, for one more time, could you tell them the website or social media, wherever they can find you and see some of this cool stuff? Absolutely, we're www.surrealmakeup.com, all one word. If they go to Instagram, it's Surreal Makeup, all one word. Also, Twitter, Tumblr, Flickr, we're also Surreal Makeup, just all one word. 
That is fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to interview with me. You're it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day and a great rest of your con. Yes, thank you, thank you. Of course. <laughs> This is Nick with the UGO Podcast, getting some more interviews here at ASIN 2018, and I'm here with... Amber. Amber, I was struck by your booth when I was walking by it. Not only do you have a lovely art pieces here and stuff, but you've combined them in some great stuff. Like, I saw these wall-mounted clocks I have to talk to you about. They are awesome. They're amazing. I love them. What was the idea behind those? Oh, well, we were moving into our own apartment and wanted some fandom wall clocks and couldn't find any, so we started to make our own. We started with the uh, Majora's Mask, and it's expanded from there. I like the Sora one. It's got, like, the 3D outprint of Sora falling over there with the, what do you call it, the cathedral-type stained-glass window thing. I like it very beautiful. But I think the, uh, the creme de la creme has to be the uh, McCree from Overwatch, where no matter where the, where the hour and minute pans point, there, it's always high noon. It's the only time that matters, really, is high noon. <laughs> that is fantastic. I love that so much. Uh, it's great. Uh, we also have you know, some regular prints and stuff like that over here. Uh, it's some lovely stuff. Do you draw just mainly stuff that inspires you, or is it more specific? Do you try and curtail it to the audience, depending on what convention you're going at? Um, actually, I tend to do stuff that I don't see very often. I just finished a piece for Blue Submarine Number 6, which was one of my childhood favorites. Ooh, I have no idea what that is. So, yeah, probably a niche thing. Oh, yeah, it, it uh, aired on Toonami, like, way back in the early 2000s, mid-2000s. Sure. So it's, a, it's an older one, but it's one of my favorites, so. Great. So you're going for that kind of niche audience. They're like, oh, man, I never see art of that. Now I want it even, like, ten times more than I would regular want an art piece. Oh, yeah. Clever. I like it. You're devious, Amber. <laughs> you have a mischievous glint in your eye. I knew it. You're up to no good. But that's, that's fine. We like that here on this podcast. Uh, so, yeah, uh, obviously I'm really impressed with the, your art and stuff. Uh, obviously you're an island kind of here. You haven't really been go around to see much. But uh, obviously some of the con comes to you with, you know, some of the cosplayers and stuff. Have you seen any cool cosplay? Ooh, I've seen a lot of Fire Emblem, which I'm super into right now because of the app game that's out. Um, but I did see someone that was dressed up as a Gundam earlier. Ooh, very that's nice. crazy. <laughs> you actually walked through here? I, I, I saw him the aisle over. He oh. was above all sure. of the displays. Oh, okay. That's why I noticed. <laughs> he's towering above them. Yeah, he's like eight feet. Nice Easy. Feet. Yeah. Well, there were some T-Rexes and some Godzillas over around here somewhere. I'm sure he had to go fight them, wherever they may be. Uh, but no, that's great. Uh, so, for your, your art style, uh, I noticed it's like, it's sort of like the, uh, uh, I don't know, now I can't even describe it. Where, where, where does your art style come from? Uh, it's a mix. I, I am trained in the classic styles. I went to college for it, but mm. I, I kind of branched off towards more of the anime video game style. Sure. And so it's a, a combined form of it. I, I love texture, so I use them a lot in the artwork. Ah, okay. That's, see, that's what was really getting me, is just the a level of detail going on in some of the prints and stuff. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, you, uh, you have the clocks and stuff. Is there any like other kind of uh, upcoming things you'd like to make, like maybe a specific clock or maybe some sort of other thing that you kind of kind of got kicking around in your brain? Um, I just finished a Final Fantasy one, which was on the bucket list for a long time. But sure. I'm looking now. I really want to do a Code Geass themed clock, oh. based off of like Clamp Est sure. style. So, I, but it's going to be super detailed, and I'm a little concerned with the time getting lost to it. So it's balancing that out. <laughs> awesome. I would, I would appreciate it. I love Code Geass. It's so, yeah. uh, Lush, my favorite tool to watch. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Uh, I, so this is your first time at Asin? Uh, we were here in 2015, so it's oh, okay. been a while. So it's been a while, but not mm -hmm. your first time. Yeah. Uh, you've been at other conventions, though. All over. We do about 30 a year. So. Wow, okay. Uh, do you have any uh, you know, fun experiences from previous conventions or anything weird or interesting that might have happened? Um, interesting. Let's see. We attended um, MAGFest for the first time this year, mm -hmm. and that was like, I had no idea that was such a big concert music festival as well sure. as a gaming. Um, so that was really cool. We got to go to some concerts, which we never do. Oh, okay. um, so we got to do that. And then we um, did one in Michigan called ShudoCon where we got to see Mystery School's first performance at a con. At a con. <laughs> so and we were told it was a concert, but it was a rave. So we ended Sorry. up going to a rave at like eleven o'clock after working twelve hours, but it was fun. It That's was the best fun. time to rave. Right. <laughs> That's when ecstasy tastes the best. <laughs> yeah. I hear allegedly. 
<laughs> you can't prove anything, Amber. Nope, nope. Why is it all on me now? Why is it suddenly the third degree with you? <laughs> Stop it. I don't... You silently. <laughs> Who's interviewing who, who here? <laughs> I plead the fifth. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, would you like to tell the people where they can look at your art and some of the great stuff, your clocks, uh, where they can see what time it is? And I know it's always high noon, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, an e email, social media, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, you can find us at Esclair Studios. Uh, we have our own website that has all of our products, or we have an Etsy that has a selection of products. Uh, but it is Esclair Studios, not Eclair, even though those are amazing and I love them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's Esclair. Uh -huh. so Esclair. E S C L A I R. Okay. Yeah, in the studios. I uh, just want to make sure we got it for you. But thank you so much again. Uh, have a great day and a great rest of your con. Uh, we just will start with a short little introduction. All right. And then open up the questions. So. Are we ready? Cool. Uh, my name is Jerry Jewell, and I am a voice actor, primarily for Funimation, though I've done a few other projects here and there. Uh, and I am also a, uh, an ADR director for Funimation. So I'm doing two shows a week for our simul dub schedule and then acting in whatever off time I can get. <laughs> That's what I do. Ta da! <laughs> Does anyone want to start off with a question? Go ahead. Is there a role you would say is your favorite and why? The one I usually say is my favorite at conventions because I haven't rethought it in a couple of years <laughs> is uh, Claire Stanfield from a show called Bacano. Um, and, and I just think it's a cool show. It's, it's, uh, it's got a timeline that jumps around, which is sometimes interesting. Uh, I get to do an accent in it, and the character I'm playing is a, a psychopath. So, but he's a very likable psychopath. One of those characters that you're like, well, I'd hate to, I wouldn't go to sleep near him, but he seems like an all right guy. <laughs> His heart's in the right place, yeah. other than when he's scraping somebody's face off on the railroad tracks. Because that's just wrong, let's face it. It's the kind of thing you learn not to do. Go ahead. Yes. So you're, this is your first year at ASIN. Mm -hmm. uh, but you just, you're not the first time at a convention setting, obviously. I have been in a few convention settings. <laughs> uh, from your past convention settings, there is there any past fan interactions or fun experiences you've had in a previous convention setting that you'd like to share with us? Uh, you know, I'm always amazed at how, first of all, how nice most people are. Because uh, sometimes when you watch behavior of large groups, uh, you can be disappointed in humanity sometimes, we'll just put it that way. Uh, but, but for the most part, everyone's very polite. Um, and they all say please and thank you. And um, they, they will be so grateful for the smallest thing that you do for them, which is, is really cool to see. I might just hang out for an extra couple of minutes and and sign someone's program book, and they are so thankful for it. And to me, I'm like, no, it's just, that was the, you know, totally worth the two seconds it took me to do it. It's 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 okay. Thank you so much. You know, I know you didn't have to, but I just like how nice people are. Um, He's got it. <laughs> Fine. Just keep go, uh, keep the ball rolling. Sure. Uh, you mentioned you're uh, an ADR director as well. Yes. Um, and you've been doing that for a while now, I think. Right? Five five years, I believe. What was the transition like from that? Um, well, they're very different. I, I think <laughs> I think having come from the voice acting side of things, it helps with the directing. Um, but they're very different things. Uh, directing, I find is really more about uh, keeping schedules and casting and um, it's more organizational than it is artistic most of the time uh, and a lot of that is time constraints but again once you once you put all of those things together if you're using your director brain to go okay well for this character I'm gonna need a, a strong lead and um, I'm going to try out a new person on this other character, so I'll get a strong lead over here that will allow me to use that extra time for this new person. You know, it's, it's a lot more of things like that than it is, okay, let's really explore how to say that line. We don't get to do that a lot. Um, 
So it's, it's more about hiring competent actors. Uh, and if they're new or green and need some work, it's about making sure you have enough time uh, to work with that new person to see if you can help them along in, in making them one of your better actors for the future. Uh, but it's more organizational than it is artistic. Uh, since you've been on both ends of the spectrum here, uh, I'm interested in like so certain characters that are like kind of almost beyond description. Like, how do you give direction or get a feel for a character? Like, say, Rabbit from Juni Tyson. Um, that one, I think, I think Vic cast me as that Rabbit, Usagi. <laughs> yes. I think was his name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which is Rabbit in Japanese, so that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> we could call him either one. <laughs> Or we could call him both and really confuse people. <laughs> Usagi Rabbit. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he's another one of those characters that I think Vic probably looked at and went, Jerry does crazy well. Uh, we'll see what he does with it. And he called me in, and it really didn't take long. I just kind of, I have a nephew um, that, that has a, kind of an interesting speech pattern sometimes. <laughs> um, and the normal thing for making someone creepy that I do, I, that I don't know why people like it, but they seem to, is to kind of soften someone up a little bit and kind of put a smile all the way through it. And I combine those two things, and then you've got a guy who kind of has a childlike mind but just wants to be friends. Uh, you know, and, and we played with it. I think they liked it, and we stuck with it. Um, it's just fun, though. You know, there's a guy, and his legs are totally jacked. He's wearing high heels. He's got a huge tail. It's ridiculous, but fun. Well, just from a little bit there, I am terrified right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it kind of sounds like you're trying to tell someone a bedtime story, but they're not going to wake up you're after they go to them sleep. A bedtime story, but they don't know that the monster's not going to get you <laughs> because the monster can't get you if you're already dead. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Oh, I got one. You got one? Yes. Yeah, so, for that kind of thing, do you ever worry about being typecast if you're it's kind of good at that kind of character? Um. It doesn't bother me. I wonder why people do it. I mean, just being on the other side of that, uh, I, I don't. I wonder why people don't try someone else every now and then. Uh, but at the same time, you don't mind because it's another part that you get to do. Uh, and and for me, I'm going into it going. Uh, they say that psycho's my thing, so I guess I should be able to pull this off relatively easy, if that is true. Uh, and then I let them worry about it. And I just, again, go in and do whatever it is I'm going to do. More questions? More questions? This is fun. Yes. I have one we want to, I mean, you do this a lot, you get the questions asked to you constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if we want to just flip the script a little bit, put the ball on your court. Is there any questions that you have for us as like press or fan of uh, anime fans stuff that have always been burning in your mind? Power's yours. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Um, I would like to know, like, what kind of things you guys notice, like, what kind of things you pay attention to when you, when you talk to guests, or if it's, a, uh, you know, do you notice different egos? Do you notice different, uh... Well, that's a, that's a I usually notice body language, hands, specifically. I, I notice it. Uh, I know that way I kind of get a gauge of what to ask the guests or whatnot of like how nervous they are or what if they're uncomfortable with my last question. I always notice what are they doing with their hands, fidgeting sides or rubbing or anything like that. My fidgeting is not because of you, just so you know. <laughs> this is something I do. Well, that's the baseline because you were doing it like immediately. So it's like either yeah. he's either he's really nervous about this thing he's probably done ten thousand times, or I, that's just the tick that he I has. Fidget constantly. Mm -hmm. If I if I'm at home, I'm walking around pacing, snapping my fingers. It's terrible, <laughs> and it seems like I can't help it anymore. So, who knows? Maybe it's some neurological thing. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, like what kind of you know? Do you, or do you guys ever sit there? Has there ever been a guest that you guys are like, this guy's totally full of himself? No, no actually, they're, I find most of them are very level-headed. Most of, We've heard a very similar response from pretty much all of them. It's like, I love this job. 
I it's, mean, it's it makes a it, gig. It makes it a lot easier to talk to people who are generally interested in their own job. Anime conventions are the best. Wizard World or some Comic Cons <laughs> where people are there because they have no other option but to grab a check. All right. I've had really bad yeah. experiences with sort of thing where the guy will do the interview but he's not into it and he kind of well will let you know but he's doing it because his publicist is right there and he well that person wants him to do it and yeah it's, it's sometimes you'll get it where it's like come on man like you work with me. we're both here we're both doing the same job like I mean you could help me out help me help you sort of thing you get crazy money for doing what you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you could at least pretend to be interested for a half hour so we know you've been asked the same questions you know yeah. a couple times today and but... that happens you know it does it doesn't matter what convention you go to it's it's always going to be the same questions um after you've done a new show, all you have to do is replace whatever title with that new show and know that you're going to get those questions. I'll bet your roster. Yeah, uh, it's, it's best just to, at least I think it's best just to get over it and understand that's a thing that happens. It's always going to happen. Um, and in a way, it's good. Uh, as long as people are always asking the same questions, you know that they're not the same people. Um, and I've been going to conventions for probably 15, 16 years now. Uh, so that's a that's someone's childhood and adolescence, uh, which means they're probably not even coming to these things anymore. <laughs> it's the next generation. Uh, so I'm happy to answer those questions as long as people are asking them, because that means people are still watching and we're still bringing new people into this whole thing or or their friends are getting them into it, or whatever the case may be. Which means you still get paid. <laughs> well, as long as there, let me put it this way, as long as there is a friend, it usually tends to be a female friend, but as long as there is a friend that has a copy of Fruits Basket somewhere, <laughs> there will be new <laughs> women watching anime year after year until the end of time. This was reverse. I made her read it. <laughs> Well, you know, as as long as there's some introduction to Fruits mm. Basket, because that's the for some reason that's that seems to be the gateway anime, uh, at least for stuff I've been in. Mm. Uh, I get that more than anything else. Fruits Basket was the first thing I ever saw. And you go, oh, cool. Who's your friend? And it's always some old, slightly older girl. <laughs> so good. Well, thank you so much for coming. Absolutely, my pleasure Absolutely. to be here. Yes. And- Oh boy, this is Nick really feeling these knees here at UG- <laughs> at uh, ASIN 2018, and I'm here with the UGO podcast getting some convention coverage, and I'm here with Niku Senpai. Uh, Niku Senpai, am I pronouncing that right? Yep, you got it. <laughs> That's, that is a great name. It really rolls off the tongue. I like it. When, you know, you started as a gamer tag early and find out it means meet senpai in Japanese, you just kind of roll with it, and uh, that's me now. <laughs> it's weird because you're the senpai, but I'm the one noticing you in doing the interview. Yes, how it goes. People ask. Sometimes, you know, I give them a glance, but... Um, I mean, the roles are reversed I? here. I, I, I'm not sure. The power dynamic seems weird. Uh, but I'm going to push through and go with it anyway. So. I mean, what happened if uh, you asked for an interview and I ignored you? I mean, that's kind of how it goes. I know. I, it would make me want to interview you more. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm desperate like that. It's Got also, it. uh, yeah, it's also why I'm surprisingly single. Uh, <laughs> hey, <it's okay>. But <laughs> uh, my love life aside, I want to talk to you about your art. Let's because do Because you have some great art pieces here. I see a lot of My Hero Academia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see some Overwatch over there. And the thing I was noticing about your Overwatch pick was there's a lot of dynamic, actually, action going on in there. Not just the normal pinups like I see. Uh, what is like inspired you to make like just this big kind of action splash piece between On those the characters? Overwatch piece specifically? Yeah. So that one uh, was actually um, a contest entry on Twitch.tv. Um, it was a, for an Overwatch fan art contest, um, and the, what inspired that is I know a lot of people are just going to do mostly pinup type stuff, right? It's very common. It's good. It can look great. But I wanted to push myself with this one, try something different by kind of really telling a little bit of a story with it. Um, and I want it to feel dynamic. So what happens in this picture is the whole idea is Symmetra, for all of you uh, Symmetra mains out there, I think you'll know. It's right here. You know you've always had that, at least that one game, where the Symmetra's been on your team and laid a bad teleporter, or has been trolling and laid a bad teleporter. This is the consequence. And so this is a story about 
a Symmetra laying a bad teleporter, and everybody in the scene has, <coughs> excuse me, everybody in the scene has gone through it and are freaking out and trying to get back up to safety. This is at the last point in King's Row, and everyone's falling off the edge, and everybody's trying to get back. And so it's a really dynamic scene. Trace is rewinding, Widow's trying to grapple away, Winston's trying to grab onto Widow, and Mercy is trying to fall, is trying to dash to Winston. And so it's a big dynamic scene to show just something funny and telling a little bit more of a story. I, I would I w would say that is unrelatable, but I've been in that place too many times. Nice. That that Rialto map, you bitch, if you put that teleporter on the boat one more goddamn time. And if we see one more play of the, sorry Overwatch, if we see one more play of the game where I see a Hanzo shooting arrows into those little dummy heads, <laughs> please, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But yes, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got it. <laughs> Getting into the weeds of Overwatch here, but yeah, I see some other pretty cool stuff uh, uh, over here. I got a whole ton of like pinups and stuff to my back. Yeah, it's all um, mainly just uh, from shows or characters that inspire me. Um, I'm definitely known as just being someone who loves waifus and stuff like that, and I have. I love them way too much. Um, so a lot of that content is that for sure. Um, a lot of them are just sort of. I stream on Twitch, Twitch.tv um, slash Niku underscore Senpai. And um, because I do it live and all that kind of stuff, I always get suggestions or, you know, if there's just a lot of feedback saying, you should really do this, really do this, a lot of times, maybe I'll do it, right? One, to push myself as an artist and to create portfolio content, um, which is always the main thing for me, right, is just growing as an artist and trying to get better. But this is my medium of doing so. It's my path of doing so. Um, so... Basically, it's it's just all the characters from games and, and, and anime and movies, whoever, that inspired me, and I just, I just need to paint it, so. Cool. Well, uh, is this your first time at ASIN? This is, actually, yeah. This is my first time vending, actually. as a, first time vending? Yes, my first time as an artist vending. Really? Yes! Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, normally I would say you don't have the look, the, your booth doesn't have the look of a first timer, let's say. Oh, uh, that, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, it has been a lot of hours and not that much sleep and just, you know, trying to uphold standards uh, to a degree. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I, I say it's very impressive for your first time. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here with your first time to, through this experience. Yes, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So fun. Uh, I'm an expert in first timers. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, uh, but not second timers or anyone that wants to do anything with me for a second or third time. Understood. That's kind of more <laughs> the first thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. I really uh, like your art so far, and I can't wait to see what your portfolio brings us. Thank you very uh, much. For those interested in your current portfolio and your current stuff, is there a website they can go to to check out all this cool stuff? There's you already couple. mentioned your, your Twitch channel. Your the Twitch, Twitch channel is kind of the main thing. I like people to funnel there. That's where I interactive and whatnot. Uh, for those, I have a couple. Um, main portfolio page is probably going to be just nicksilvaart.com. Um, and then... Uh, Instagram is uh, Niku underscore Senpai. Um, Twitter, and Silva Art. And ArtStation should be uh, Nick Silva Art as well. Um, and any of those sites will probably link you to other sites and they'll all interconnect. Um, so it'll be pretty easy to find me. Very cool. And you know what? This has been great. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you for taking the time to interview with me. And have a great day. Rest you too, con. good luck at the con. Enjoy. This is Nick here with the UGO podcast at Anime Central, and I am lucky enough to be here with my favorite Japanese superheroes. I'm here with, uh, I'm sorry, was it Murder Explosion Man? What was the name that you uh, end up going with? It's Lord Explosion. Lord Explosion, how could I forget? I'm so sorry. And your sidekick slash uh, abuse partner, Deku, over here. I'm not sure what those descriptions, but uh, I'll take it. Yes, Deku is here as well. Uh, so what's your names, guys? Uh, I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. My name is Kenny. I'm the Deku cosplayer. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Kenny. Uh, so you guys are in some great outfits uh, from My Hero Academia. I love that show. Uh, I especially love the gauntlets. You said that these were made out of AV EVA foam. Yeah. So they, but apparently they're a little hard to manipulate and do stuff with. Yeah, because they're kind of big and like... Um, the openings where your hands actually stick out, they're, they're kind of wide enough in diameter. You can't really reach for anything. You kind of get blocked by them. Sure, sure. Well, I love the, the hair, too, the wig. It's very cool. I mean, it probably doubles for your cloud cosplay as well. <laughs> but I think uh, it, it really does you well. Where'd you get the wig? 
Yeah, I just got it off Amazon. I kind of, I kind of don't like the weight because it's kind of. Is it hot? Uh, no, it's kind of a little bit small in my head, so it hurts a bit. Oh, yeah, okay. it's not too much. Oh, okay. Yeah, and kind of the problem is that the hair explodes out a little too much, okay. so it doesn't stick down to my head. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, and I also love here the uh, the guard here you have in your mouth here. You don't have the, do you have the, I can't even see behind you, but you got, oh, you have the whole mask. The whole mask and everything, cool. I never got his cosplay why it was a bunny. Could you tell me that, like why it was the, the bunny thing? Um, it's a bunny now, that's how it's perceived as. In the beginning of the show, uh, people didn't take it as a bunny, rather, Deku himself was paying homage to his favorite hero, All Might, who has very, very small strands of hair that stick up at the front of his head. And uh, Deku pays homage by uh, to that by having his hero costume have the same type of, like, sticking strands out, except it's a mask. Sure. I also love the utility belt with all the pouches. Very Rob Liefeld 90s. I like it. I don't know what's in Deku's pouches, but like you got your wallet and like snacks. Oh my, you're just ready. You're just convention ready. What a great cosplay for you to be so you know versatile with. I love it. Uh, so is this guy's your first cosplay or have you cosplayed before? Uh, no, uh, I've actually cosplayed uh, uh, like a couple years from now. Okay. I mean, by now. Uh, we've been here like, uh, this is our fifth. Year? Fifth year at Asin? Yeah, fifth year. Wow, okay, you guys are some vets. What are some of your, some of your previous cosplays? Uh, Roxas from Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of League of Legends ones like Twitch. And uh, actually, I can't think of any more. I, there's a lot. <laughs> How about you? Uh, I've cosplayed a lot of cosplays. Uh, Deku, obviously, I'm cosplaying right now. I've also been going to Asin for five years, by the way. Uh, uh, I've also cosplayed Arcade Ezreal from League of Legends. I've cosplayed Sora from Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I've cosplayed Nero from Devil May Cry 4. There's a lot of like fantasy I'm, I, I really like, and those are my favorite type of cosplays. Great. You're, you're Sora from Kingdom Hearts 3. I just want to go behind you and play with a controller while you're doing stuff, because I feel like that's the closest I'm ever going to get to playing Kingdom Hearts 3. So there's that. Uh, so that's great. Uh, is there anything you guys are looking forward to to this ASIN uh, in particular or something you've already seen that's pretty cool? Uh, something I'm forward, uh, looking forward to at ASIN is I'm, I really like, like coming to ASIN for the photo shoots and the atmosphere of other cosplayers all in one area just to have like a good time, have a photo shoot, everyone's included. It's really like it's really like an, a positive atmosphere. I love going into the dealer's hall, seeing all like the different like big companies, the big name companies that come out, like Funimation, Viz Media, Boom Slank, uh, Bang Zoom, all of those just straight up for anime. It's, it's really great. You can buy stuff, buy your favorite gear, buy your favorite, you know. So you're just prop. jazzed for the whole thing. You're just, you're in Ab it to win it. Absolutely, that's my favorite. <laughs> How about you, sir? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, yeah, I like looking forward to like meeting like people from the same series. You know, you just don't know each other, mm -hmm. but then like once you realize you have that common interest, then you kind of hang out together and you, you get to meet new friends and everything like that. New friendship, then that is an anime answer I've ever heard one. It's the answer for what you want to do, or how to defeat a bad guy, how to cook breakfast. I'm pretty sure friendship is just the answer for everything. Uh, but thank you guys so much for interviewing with me. I would shake your hand, but it's like the gauntlet. Okay, like I don't want to actually send it off. And then, of course, yours is just regular, so that's great. Uh, but have a great day of your day. Oh, I should answer you. Do you guys have any cosplay pages or Instagram accounts you'd like to pimp so that people can see your cosplay? Yes, uh, I have an Instagram account. It's uh, Instagram.com slash L-O-L-E-L-I-T-Z. That's L-O-L-E-L-I-T-Z. Lol Alights. Sounds good. How about you? Uh, yeah, you can just follow me on my regular uh, Instagram. Uh, then I can just post up every other link for everything else. It's uh, Azerno because I'm really edgy. It's, <laughs> it's A-Z-C as in cat, E-R-N-O. Great. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your con. You too. This is Nick here uh, later in the day in ASIN. Artist Alley has shut down, but I, that doesn't stop me from getting one more uh, interview with a great creator I've just met. Uh, what's your name? Paige. Paige. Uh, I am so happy I got to see uh, your booth before everything got to shut down. Uh, I didn't realize this, but you were doing the Lord's work the entire day in which you were making us nerds smell good during these conventions. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, so what was the name of your booth? 
uh, fictitious fragrances. We specialize in pretty much any anything that smells good with a, a geeky origin. I see, I see. So, yeah, uh, you were selling soaps I saw, candles, deodorant. Deodorants, you know, got to stop that con stink. In the con funk. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, again, you are just a... Uh, an angel from uh, angel from nose heaven, basically for me. Uh, so, yeah, I saw some really cool stuff over there. Like, there's D20 soap. I saw. Yeah. Uh, I expected it to be in the shape of a D20, but apparently there no. There's a D20 inside it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm a huge D&D nerd, so that's something that I've been making more and more of. Uh, I have these awesome D20 soap molds, and I put a matching D20 inside. I also do bath bombs with full sets of. Uh, seven dice inside, so you get a nice smelling bath, and you can uh, roll some crits and hit some enemies. I, I like that you force you're forcing them to actually use it to smell good, and then order to get their prize. Exactly. It's just this, uh, yeah. <laughs> this mental game you are playing, Paige, is just up and above, beyond anything that uh, I've seen so far. It's it's fantastic. Uh, so some of these fictitious fragrances. Um, yeah, so like some of the deodorants, like what are you what are you exchanging out for the con funk? Instead of smelling like Dorito feet, what am I gonna smell like? Uh, one of our most popular ones is Dragon Hunter. It's like a nice pine scent, basically like super masculine. Like you've been chopping wood all day, and okay. uh, you smell it definitely better than the the funk. We have some magical girl themed ones as well if you're more into like floral and lavender and that sort of thing. I see, I see. Uh, I noticed some over there that were sh very strange. I'm not sure if I want to know what a chocobo pen smells like, <laughs> but that was definitely one of the candles I saw. Yeah, uh, that's, that's one of the ones that a lot of people kind of scoff at at first. They, uh, you know, thinking of chocobo stables, you think of not pleasant smells. But uh, we like to think that it's the clean stable, freshly cleaned. It's straw, it's sort of hay and, and wood. I, I, I like it. I mean, it reminds me of like a, like a farm, like maybe old farmhand days. Uh, uh, I, we have a friend of the pod that could actually use that now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, I also saw some Harry Potter themed ones. Oh, yeah. Is that like what the common rooms smell like? Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. Like, uh, the, the Gryffindor Tower one smells like fire and cookies. Like, imagine sitting in one of the big plush chairs while the fire is going and people are doing their homework. Uh, the Ravenclaw one is more airy because the Ravenclaw Tower has all these windows and libraries, so it's a mix of, like, books and fresh air. Oh, I was going to say, what was the uh, smell that you'd make for a false sense of superiority uh, for <laughs> Ravenclaws? But that's fine, you know. The airy thing is cool too. Hey, I'm a Ravenclaw. Don't don't be. I can tell, Paige. <laughs> All this mental torture you're making people to force them to bathe, like it's definitely a Ravenclaw move. <laughs> you're doing good, but you're being manipulative about it. Like. I'll, I'll own up to that. I'll own up to that. Not like the rest of like, like stupid good people like me, like the Gryffindors, <laughs> which are like, we'll we'll do the right thing after we stumble it through just a couple puzzles, and then I I don't know. Well, luckily, we have Hermione to balance us out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was. Uh, what's been the most popular scent for today? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Uh, Hufflepuff surprisingly sells out first every time. I don't know what it is. Hufflepuffs are like underrepresented, I guess. That's uh, the first one that always goes. Another really popular one is Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. Rick and Morty is huge, of course. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. Yeah, yeah. What does uh, that smell like? It's like jalapeno and mango. It's a little spicy, like sort of. I imagine. Uh, how it would taste after going through one of Rick's portals because uh -huh. you know it's it's spicy it's it's not pleasant but it, it, it smells good. <laughs> okay, you know, it's spicy. You throw a little shot of whiskey in there, and I bet you that's one of what uh, one of Rick's burps smell like. Oh yeah, that's, oh, yeah. I I feel that one right there. <laughs> that's that's absolutely fantastic. Do you have any uh, fragrances in mind that you'd like to con concoct and try out? Anything that we could look forward to in the future? Uh, yeah, definitely. I am super into D and D right now. That's kind of my main thing. I run like multiple games, so I've been uh, looking to do more D and D inspired scents. I have some uh, takes on what ale would smell like. I've got a dwarven ale and orcish mead, like that sort of thing. Um, and I want to do more like atmospheric ones where, you know, you can sit around the table and roll some dice with people and like, oh, it's a dungeon. Here's what, you know, maybe a abandoned dwarven forge would smell like. And you can light the candle and kind of get into the mood. 
Getting the whole 4D experience. I like it. Yeah, exactly. It's like on the Shrek ride in Wisconsin Dells, where they throw like uh, uh, like uh, gaseous stuff at you <laughs> when Shrek farts. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Uh, I'm way above the scratch and sniff days. I love the advanced in technology. That is fantastic. Well, Paige, thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a website or social media page where people can come and check out your great fragrances and all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. We have an Etsy shop. Uh, it's etsy.com slash shop slash fictitious fragrances. Uh, we have a Tumblr under the same name. Uh, right now, I do have to warn, the shop is a little sparse because we've been going to so many cons lately. We can't get everything up online. Sure. Uh, but, you know, send us a message if you something sounded cool and we'll get back to you and set something up. That is fantastic. Well, thank you for taking the time to be with me. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, of course. Have a great day and a great rest of your con. Thanks, you too. You guys ready? Awesome. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Micah Solzad. I'm a voice actor for Funimation. Uh, some of my notable roles are Soul and Soul Eater, uh, Yuri Plisetsky and Yuri on Ice, uh, Yuno and Black Clover, that's airing on Toonami right now. Um, and I am also a webcomic illustrator. I draw a comic called Ties That Bind. Pleasure to meet you. Who has any questions? No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, I just was wondering if this is your first time at Anime Central specifically? Uh, no, this is my third time at, at Anime least. Central? Third time? I think, yeah. At least. In this universe, at least. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we're not counting multiple universes? Ah, uh, who knows? Can we count all the universes? Probably not. Probably not. Well, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to just keep going with my question. Uh, <laughs> if uh, you have any, uh, obviously you've been here before, have you any uh, favorite experiences from previous ASINs that you'd like to share with us, or any fun memories from previous ones? Uh, yeah. Um, I remember my first ASIN, we had like a little industry mixer on Thursday night when we got here, and I was with uh, another fellow voice actress, Bryn April, who's a, a friend of mine. Um, and we're, we're very social, and by that I mean we're not very social. So we were there and everyone's mingling and having a good time and we're just sort of there and like we're st she was starting to get really nervous because it was one of her first conventions. And she was like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, just act natural. So she like stands next to this big cheesecake and goes, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and it's like... Nat natural, actually, Wisconsin. natural, not not weird. <laughs> We're from Wisconsin, so that is pretty natural. That is pretty natural. That's <laughs> as long as it's cheesecake, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why you were weird in that situation. That was she was normal. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. I was weird. I'm sorry. I need to. Be, it's the modern days. I need to stop. Being mm -hmm. So uh, close-minded. Get right. cheese woke. Exactly. Cheese woke. No. It's the state model of Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Cheese woke. It is indeed. <laughs> don't be so curd. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments or concerns? Man, I don't want to keep hogging, Go but we'll I keep asking I'll questions. I'll tell someone who's supposed to jump in. Uh, I was wondering, you mentioned <laughs> you uh, you draw for a comic? Yes, I do. That is, that's really cool. Have you ever actually uh, voiced a character or imagined a voice for a person, person as you were drawing them? Yes. Uh, oddly enough, my acting and my drawing sort of go hand in hand sometimes. Uh, when I draw comics these days, uh, I approach it as a director for like a film, like how I would shoot characters and things like that. So it helps me, uh, like I think of voices like who, who the characters would be, you know, if they were real. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to think, well, of my friends who would voice them. And, and that helps like strengthen their character, the decisions, their reads and things like that. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of that comes into play. Um, I don't think I have a cast set in stone. Um, but you know, maybe one day. No fantasy casting at all? I mean, I haven't really thought that hard about it, but eventually I'm sure I know enough people in this industry to be like, hey, you want to be in my thing? Cool, I'll pay you. You know, <laughs> as you do. Uh, so going back to your, your comic, uh, The Ties That Bind, that was yes. on the phone. Uh, that's really cool. Is, do you, uh, could you give us a brief description of what it's about? Oh uh, yeah, uh, it's sort of like a, a, a nod to like the old 90s fantasy anime. Um, it's a, it's a, a world where magic is very commonplace, as common as electricity. Uh, everyone can see it, every, everyone can use it, um, but there have been people born with the odd uh, defect in this world of not being able to use magic, not being able to interact with magic. And nobody knows why, but 
the the government in this in this world has been rounding up all of these people who can't use magic for some mysterious reason. And one of our main characters, who is a squad captain in, in the military, uh, is one of these types that can't use ma magic, but she is quite the badass still. Um, but yeah, they're all being rounded up to the capital for some mysterious reason, nobody knows why. Well, as someone that's eternally looked like Draco Malfoy, I'm glad someone's doing something about those filthy mudbloods. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> No, that's, that sounds really cool. Uh, where is that available? Uh, it is available on our website, um, pineapplestudio.com. Uh, we also have a physical copy available on Amazon. So if you just Google Ties That Bind Webcomic or just my name, Mike Solisad, you'll be able to find it. Uh, so back to your voice acting experiences. Um, so you spend a lot of time in the booth. You know, and I find that very claustrophobic anytime I see people in there. It feels Fair. like a, a coffin. Is there anything like small or anything like weird details that you find like either comforting or dis disheart disheartening during the booth or is it just like an experience for you? This is probably terrible to say, but I find being in the booth to be like, I notice more disgusting things. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to remember, you said a coffin, right? I like mm -hmm. to think of it as like uh, an insane asylum because it is a dark padded room where I'm alone listening to the voices in my head and then interacting with them. That sounds much worse. And then they don't let me out. <laughs> um, so, but like there are things like, I don't think those rooms have been cleaned Ooh. in a very long, like deep cleaned. It's carpet, so they're, you know, imagine you're working on a show with maybe a cast, the main cast of like 20 something people, and who knows how many like background characters, each uh, wall of session we have like four people. And so there are people constantly going in and out of that room, lots of traffic. And uh, especially during the holidays where people are getting sick, like it's carpet, it's padding, germs like to live there. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, ask any actor, like, hey, have you ever uh, accidentally touched or like your mouth touched the, the pop filter mm -hmm. that's supposed to catch any of like the, the plosives on the mic? Mm -hmm. They'll have some stories. <laughs> Yeah. It's the spit catcher. Not, yes. Not to imagine someone sneezing into a pop filter. Thank you for that. Oh, oh, it's worse sometimes. Some, some, some booths don't clean them. Oh, so oh. you'll see some like particles in there, and you're like, ah, can we like can I'm we douse singer. that in like alcohol and then like set it on fire? Then I, then I hear Kyle Hebert just spills a soda and gets it all sticky just to be a jerk. Oh yeah, uh, there, there are times <laughs> where you open the door and they're like, someone's snacks are there on the stool and you're like, come on, man. And you look down and like, someone spilled coffee and you're like, what is this? What is this? Come on. Yeah, I notice things like that where it's like, hey, hang on, hang on. Why, why, why does it look like someone bit a side of the, uh, the foam out? Were they hungry? Other times it would be like, I don't, I don't think... I don't, why is there's like a like the glass between the actor and the director and you see someone's like face <laughs> print or just very glass, desperate to like, get out. Do I want to know what happened here? Did the actor not get the read that the director wanted and you're just like, read it better! Or no? It's up to my imagination really. No one knows. Uh, I have a question. If you sure. um, obviously you come to the conventions, there's a lot of great fan experiences. But yeah. I was wondering if the, any of those extend out to out of uh, convention experiences. Have you ever met anyone, a fan, in you know, out in the real world? Uh, n uh, no, not really, because I don't go out very often, thankfully. No. Um, there, there are, there have been odd experiences or exchanges, though. Like I remember, and usually at airports. Uh, I remember I was at TSA and I was wearing a Soul Eater shirt with a big Soul Eater logo on it. And uh, TSA was like, hey, I like your shirt. I'm like, thanks. And I decided to be kind of coy. I was like, because I'm in it. <laughs> I was young. Um, and he was just like, what? I'm like, I do the voice of Soul and Soul Eater. And I walked. <laughs> and he was like, wait, wait. And he, but he couldn't move because he was still checking people. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, that's such a diva move. <laughs> um, but the most recent one I found very entertaining was that we were going through TSA again. A bunch of voice actors were going through it, and uh, this guy was like, uh, he saw a bag that one of the actresses had, and said, "Oh, oh, anime! I really dig that!" Oh, and he started naming all these shows, and they were all like titles that Funimation did. So everyone's feeling kind of good about themselves, and then, uh, and then specifically, specifically, he was like, "But man, I only watch subs though." 
Because, like, doves are the worst, and everyone's oh. face got down, and I was just like... <laughs> I want to see them start a fight with TSA over <laughs> subs versus dubs and be the most petty thing in the world. I got strip shooters because I said I liked those better. That's a good story. I mean, come on. Can, can you imagine like a headline of like, you know, a actor, voice actors and TSA <laughs> clash at, at a local airport over subs versus dubs? Like, how dumb would that be? <laughs> I want to see that headline on Go Across Fox News. <laughs> Anime ruining our children. Exactly. <laughs> Anime ruining Fighting in the airports. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Black Clover is your most recent uh, voice acting credit that's been released. Yeah. Um, is that one, is that character you know any different than some of the other characters you've done? Um, yes and no. Uh, there are elements where I play characters like the quiet, angsty, broody type before. Um, but his dynamic with the main character is something that I've never really seen hmm. before. Uh, the... It's the first Shonen series that I've seen where the, the, the rivals are genuinely friends. Mm -hmm. They root for each other, they actually care about each other. And that's something that I, I, I'm shocked with. It's weird to think about because you think of all these rivalries and their friends. I'm like, yeah, they're friends, but like the actual dynamic that they have is very natural uh, and very human. So uh, yeah, that's, that's new to me. I, I really like that about that character in that show in particular. Any other questions? Uh, do you have uh, different like vocal warm ups some people do and you know before they record on the booth? Do you have anything that you do beforehand? Yeah, uh, my go tos. I apparently struggle with saying like uh, s ending words on s or on a t's. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of my warm ups are like uh, the thirty three thieves thought that they thrilled the throne throughout Thursday. Or uh, xylophones exist, or so existentialists insist. It just helps. Uh, and then I do like a one of those dumb warm-up songs where you're supposed to sing the entire thing in one breath. I'm not going to do it now because that's stupid. <laughs> but uh, usually on the drive there, it's just a lot of that. I'm sorry to my wife for having to listen to that every single time. <laughs> I have one more. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've been asking you questions this whole like, just for a whole half hour here, and you've done this on the uh, side, just people bombarding you with questions. I'd like to put the ball in your court. Is there anything you could want to ask us or you know me specifically? I'll answer honestly. I can't answer for these, but if you could ask us anything, what would it be? Uh, sure. Um, what? I mean, I'm assuming you guys are anime fans mm -hmm. or watch anime, dabble in anime. Um, what would you like to see out of the anime industry that? currently is not being done or uh, being explored. Hmm. It'd be awesome if there was a more unified platform for releasing, like, currently airing anime. A unified platform? The current fracturing between different services of where airing anime is going is not helping. That's not helping world. at all? Where you can only get specific things from, say, like Amazon or from... As well, mm -hmm. well, at least Amazon finally shut off theirs. It was their... Right. They bought every Sentai show on the planet and still right. couldn't get their service off the ground. So okay, a unified platform. It would just be really nice. I would pay like I would pay more than I pay for Crunchyroll right now for a platform that I knew was going to get all of the major studios shows every year. Have you heard of Verve? Yes, but Verve also includes a bunch of stuff I have no interest in at all. Mm -hmm. Verve is a disaster. So just sure. like anime Not specific. Wrong. <laughs> just an I, I want a, an anime channel basically you know like I will pay a cable channel rate for an anime channel that has only anime content on it interesting streaming service a streaming service a cable channel whatever however they want to present it I will gladly pay for it okay because right now you know you pay for pressure you pay for Hulu you pay for mm -hmm. Netflix and yeah. you still miss shows because there's right. still shows that come up in other spots right like on Funimation streaming platform or in other spots and it's there's too many out there to get everything at once. Interesting. That is a very, very good suggestion. Anything else? Mm. Well, mine's controversial. Like, the one thing I want to see out of anime is a little bit less of the standard sexual humor of, it's funny because someone's getting inappropriately touched when uh, without their consent, no, and that's funny. That's, that's valid. That is and absolutely valid. that bugs me a little bit. No, I completely understandable. Uh, uh, do you think, okay, so on, on top of that, do you, do you think maybe, what does the future of anime hold? Is it, uh, is it through uh, 
you know, higher ups deciding what the market's going to be like, or is it, do you think there is a genuine future in, say, crowdfunding or crowdsourcing passion projects? I think both are kind of necessary. Well, I mean, also, uh, well, passion projects are great, but there are only so much limit to what can be offered and what they can actually accomplish with even the money they're given. Right. You're going to need. You're gonna still need the big guys coming through and getting like people like you, where they can like find people off the you know demos, be like, oh, this is a good voice actor. Let's take them in right. and start training them. Versus fan projects, which are, you know, they might be taking real voice actors, they might be using it themselves, right. um, trying to mix and match. Um, so I think it has to be a mixture of the quality that would be for the best for the whole industry. Okay. Were you gonna to add to that? I would say that the industry also is making a switch over of like some of the more popular stuff, like say My Hero Academia. There's a lot of money now in subverting tropes. Like one of my favorite things is the uh, what's her name that creates stuff out of nothing. God, I can't remember her name, but she wears a skimpy outfit too. But right. she's a shy character, and it's that's a subverting the trope because. Uh, her and some other characters need to have like their powers work through their skin ah, so okay. she's, she's kind of uncomfortable the whole time because she's wearing a revealing outfit but that's right. how her powers work and I'm like okay well it's fan service but also there's a joke and an underlying you know thing trope that we're subverting here so at least there's something like that okay yeah, the kill, the kill, the kill, the kill. yeah. <laughs> right too. Yeah. Uh, I actually do agree with you on Black Clover having a bit more different dynamic t between the characters I actually do like that a lot that Characters that aren't just like, we're enemies, why? Because, or right. just like, we're rivals, so we hate each other. So I have to cut the show. No, that's have the next guest start here, and we have oh. to set up for a three no hours. No oh. Thank you so much. No, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. No, no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> Um, we're, we're, just, we're just still in time. Yeah, but it was just such a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have given him the power to ask questions. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Star shining bright above. To whisper, I love you. While I'm alone, as blue as can be. Dream a little dream of me. Oh, and that was our ASIN content. Oh my goodness! Thank you guys so much for anyone who you know interviewed with us, or you know just kind of came and talked with us. Or, you know, anyone we met. You guys were great. Our toes to allow us to take pictures of you. Thank you so much for the ASIN press group that uh, had us there in the press capacity. It was fantastic. You guys were great and accommodating. Uh, we hope to come back next year and do more stuff, even more press sessions, even. As long uh, as no one complained about us. As long and, uh, yeah, as long as we're allowed back. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I uh, am... Super excited. Uh, oh, also, uh, as a reminder, guys, I will be in Anime Minneapolis this weekend. Uh, if you guys will, you know, anyone's going to be there that was at ASIN, I, I mean, I'm sure assume there must be some crossovers there. I'll be out there with my microphone doing the same sort of thing I was doing at ASIN. Uh, we also have, you know, panels all, all over the place there. Check out our Facebook and Twitter for uh, you know, the, our panel schedule. I'll have, I'll have all that stuff up there. Sadly, um, I won't be there. It's because Dark Souls Remastered is the, coming out. That'd be, is this the first time I've done a con solo? No, I did. I mean, you went to like I Anime it. Milwaukee both times. I, yeah, I did Anime Milwaukee solo a couple of times, but that one was like, I didn't have panels or any like, that was just a kind of on the whim sort of thing. Like last minute, like, well, I have a week, like I have a weekend to go and do stuff. Yep. It was the first time that I've had work interfere with a convention, but that's all right. Cause I'm quitting my job. Oh, goodness. Uh, count this as your two weeks notice, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, otherwise, thank you guys so much for listening. Again, if you would like to check us out uh, on our, any of our social media, at, you know, we are on Twitter and Instagram at UGO Podcast. Check out our Facebook page. Maybe give us a like while you're there. If you would like to rate us or subscribe to us on iTunes, that really helps us out uh, with visibility and all that good stuff. Uh, we will read whatever five-star review you put on there. We will read it on the show word for word, guaranteed. That is my guarantee. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much, and we'll catch you at the next convention. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to pause the show, and we're out.